Hello everyone and welcome to Sharp Dress Gaming and today we are back with the No Name League. This is week four and we are battling the Jacksonville Garden Wars, uh, coached by Euphoric himself. The link for Euphoric will be in the description below. Um, I did do this post commentary for you guys this time. Um, we, because we were just trying to get the battle fit in at a good timing, just because of you know, I it was bad timing honestly. Uh, because just stuff going on in real life. I had a really bad sleep schedule for the weekend because I was working a lot. That kind of stuff, but we got the battle in, luckily. And I think, at this point, we're the only teams to have gotten our Week 4 battle in. I know the Chelsea Chimacos and the Cincinnati Umbreons can't do it because Tiki has actually left. Uh, he hasn't, like, he hasn't left for boot camp yet, but, or booty camp, but, um, he went home so he doesn't have any of his stuff, uh, before he's leaving. So, unfortunately, all the battles with Tiki from, for everybody are going to result in a win for both sides with the 3-0 differential for both sides. That's just how that's going to work. So, unfortunately, Josh is the only one that didn't get to battle him at all. So, it's he's really the only one that's affected, whereas the rest of us just get the normal 3-0 for every battle against him. Which, it, it worked out for the most part, except for against Josh. But uh, And then, I know the Scotland Scissors and the Boston Breilooms, uh, Tuanis' internet went out in the middle of their battle, so they're still trying to get that settled. But, so, so far, we're the only ones that have done it. But, um, we have, this week I brought, looking at this, I'm not going to go do the whole team bl breakdown nonsense I usually do with live battles, just because uh, I, I figure it kind of pointless since I already know what happened, so I could kind of be like, oh, I did this because of this, and then look really cool. Honestly, um, I just brought, brought a bunch of Pokemon, you know. So, the, uh... Looking at his team, though, I did see he had very few special attackers. Uh, his full team uh, was Tyranitar, Cresselia, Dragonite, Keldeo, Rotom Heat, Ferrothorn, Crobat, Metagross, Porygon 2, and Mega Manetric. So there's a few special attackers, but I noticed his, his, uh, his big hitters were on the physical side. Uh, so I figured I could go more defensive with the team. So I did bring Heatran. Uh... Heatran, I actually forgot to put an item on because I was switching between two different Heatrans, deciding which one I wanted to use. Uh, and I was going to use Air Balloon. You'll see in this battle it didn't matter, though. Uh, I would have liked to have at least some kind of item on him. But uh, we do have our Heatran. Uh, we do have our Main Netric. I figured Main Netric would go up good against his Main Netric because I would have Lightning Rod where he has to Mega Evolve and he would no longer have the Lightning Rod. Uh, I also brought my Swampert. My Bisharp, my Conkelder, and my Mega Metagross, uh, since he didn't get to see the battle last time. Um, I was going to point something else out. Oh, I wanted to bring Gyarados to try and bait the Electro-type attacks to switch into my Magnetric, but I really wanted to bring Swampert uh, as my physical wall, so I didn't really see a point in bringing both Swampert and Gyarados, since they kind of do the same thing. Uh, I mean, Gyarados has Intimidate, whereas Swampert doesn't, but... They both are using the water type, uh, ground type, and a uh, ice type move. So, uh, he did end up bringing Tyranitar, Mega Magnetric, Keldeo, Dragonite, Crobat, and Feral Thorn. So, we're gonna hop into the battle here and see how it went for us. So, as we do start, uh, Link is apparently his name for this. He sends out Feral Thorn. I kind of predicted that since I was really his only really strong lead Pokemon. So, I led with Heatran. Figuring I can just lava plume, I can just set up a sub, I can do whatever I wanted, really. Because Ferrothorn can't do anything to Heatran. He could set up his own Stealth Rocks, but it's risky. Uh, he actually goes out into his Tyranitar and sets up the Sand Stream. Now, I believe I predicted this and went for the Earth Power. No, I just went for Substitute. Easier, easier play. Easier play to just Substitute. Um, but here I went for Earth Power, figuring, hey, I can get some free damage off on this Tyranitar. But it is defensive AF, and it gets... It takes, like, no damage there. So he goes for the crunch just to break my substitute, obviously. And it does break it because it's a Tyranitar. It's going to do that. So now I need to switch out because I do no damage. And he actually gets me with the pursuit. Luckily, I'm able to live that uh, so we don't lose Heatran for no reason. And that's kind of why the air balloon didn't matter because it would have been gone there. So I'm going to bring out my Conkelder here, which is nice that he pursued it because now my Conkelder doesn't take any damage other than the Sandstorm. So he is going to switch out, obviously, and go into his Crobat. I predicted a switch of some sort, and I went for the Ice Punch, and luckily it was Crobat uh, being four times resisted to the Fighting-type moves. Ice Punch was so much better that I predicted a switch. 
And of course, we're going to take our sandstorm damage. Usual nonsense, not tomfoolery. And I'm going to switch out because I don't want to take a Brave Bird right now. And I am going to switch into my main network because Brave Bird can't really do anything. And I just hoped he didn't go for a poison type attack. He actually roosts here, um, expecting a switch, I'm assuming. Or uh, knowing that he could outspeed and uh, Ice Punch would do less because of the roost. Uh, he is going to switch out here because Manetric can do do the do. And he goes out into his own Manetric. And I predicted this or some other Pokemon that take Electric type and just went for the Flamethrower since I am Choice Scarfed. It does burn, uh, but in the long run, the burn doesn't matter because I do automatically speed this Manetric because I know it's a Mega Manetric. Uh, and I am Choice Scarf, so I am faster. I I think I'm still faster than Mega Manetric, even even if he had gotten his speed uh, increase with like using Protect or something. So I just get the Flamethrower off, and my Manetric does its job. It kills the other Manetric. That's what I want Manetric to do, so Manetric, you're good. Um, not in the way I thought it was going to. I didn't get a uh, Lightning Rod boost, but what are you going to do? He does switch out to Dragonite here. So I'm going to bring Manetric out, knowing that a Flamethrower can't do much. And I'm just going to go into all the pair, the Swampert, who is physically defensive. So it will take this Earthquake rather nicely. It does take a critical hit, though, unfortunately. And that still only does a little over half. And I do have Leftovers, which will bring me back to half. He is going to switch out here, um, not wanting to take Ice Punch, Ice Beam, whatever I have for him. He actually goes out in the Ferrothorn. Uh, what did I go for here? I did just go for the safe Ice Beam. I uh, figured he was probably Choice Bandit into that uh, Earthquake. And Ferrothorn was really the only one that wanted to take an Ice Beam. So he, Ferrothorn does in fact take it. I just go for Stealth Rocks here. Uh, expecting him to expect me to switch. Probably put up his own Stealth Rocks. Which he does in fact. I figured he wouldn't go for the Power Whip this turn. Because he was expecting to switch. So... Uh, and I really didn't need Swampert that much in this battle, especially with Magnetric being gone, so I figured just put up my rocks. If I died, I died. Whatever. I do switch out here, because maybe I can use Swampert later and just go out into my Conkelder, the Mighty Joe, Mighty Joe Young. And we do get the Leech Seed, unfortunately, onto our Conkelder, but uh, we'll be trading some recoveries, I guess, because he'll have Leech Seed off Drain Punch, he'll Iron Barb, Rocky Helmet me, or whatever item he has. It'll be a fun time, <laughs> but uh, I actually switch out my Conkelder, either expecting him to switch and also just getting rid of Leech Seed, and I go out into my Magnetric, do take some Stealth Rocks, and he goes for the Power Whip. It does miss, which is really nice because Magnetric does not want to take a Power Whip. I just go for the Flamethrower here, get some nice damage off on the Ferrothorn, luckily, or, luckily for him, I guess, he has enough special defense to live it. He does get a Leech Seed off, but uh, if this Ferrothorn wants to stay in, it is going to die to my next Flamethrower. Uh, so he gets his Leech Seed recovery, of course, of course, of course. And I'm going to switch out, expecting him to switch or get rid of Leech Seed. Both work. And I go on my Metagross, because uh, if he does stay into Power Whip, uh, Metagross can take it very nicely. He does actually switch out, though. And he goes into the Crobat, which is perfect for my Metagross. I can Mega Evolve, get my speed, and start Whomping on some Pokemon. He is going to retreat Crobat because, of course, Crobat can't touch a Metagross. I'm immune to one of his stabs, and I resist the other. And he goes out into Tyranitar, unfortunately for him. Uh, he does set up the Sandstream, which won't affect Metagross, which is really nice. And I'm just going to Mega Evolve. I believe I went for Ice Punch here, expecting to hit that Crobat pretty hard. Uh, but let's see if that actually happens. I did go actually go for Zen Headbutt, that's right. I went for Zen Headbutt to get the stab, uh, super effective, but Tyranitar was the only one that could be immune to it, and it took it. So I do Iron Head. Uh, I carry the Iron Head this battle, because I didn't want to be missing with Meteor Mash, and Iron Head was enough to kill Tyranitar, so obviously it was fine. He does go out to the Dragonite, who will take Stealth Rock damage, and I know I can easily speed outspeed this Dragonite and Ice Punch in the face to take it out for t four times super effective. I know this Dragonite, because I gave him this Dragonite, uh, is a little more defensive, but uh, it's still a Mega Metagross. Tough claws boosted four times super effective. So then Keldeo comes out here. So I just have to hit the Zen Headbutt and we'll be safe from Keldeo. He actually does go for the Sacred Secret Sword, uh, revealing that he is Choice Scarfed. But uh, that is neutral to a Metagross and I will get a Zen Headbutt off to bop this Keldeo right in the face, knock it out. So Metagross is getting a nice little sweep going here. Uh, let's see, Crobat is next on uh, Metagross's plate. Uh, I did just go for Iron Head. I can't remember. It go he goes for the Acrobatics. Doesn't do very much because I do resist, and I do get the Iron Head off. Just went for the safe Iron Head. Uh, 
I know Ice Bunch probably could have killed, but if you would have roosted, I think was my main thing, and I didn't want to miss Zen Headbutt. So I knew Iron Head could kill from there. And he goes out in the Ferrothorn. Now at this point, I could have switched out preserving this Metagross, but I figured, hey, whatever. Um, Ferrothorn really can't do anything, and I don't want to mess around too much and, like, throw away a bunch of extra Pokemon. Uh, Earthquake, unfortunately, does not KO, but he does Leech Seed, and the health that Metagross is at, we're going to live the Leech Seed anyway. So, going down to 25, and Ferrothorn will not take another Earthquake. I think he... I I was wondering if he had Protect. If he did, he didn't go for it. Uh, just figuring the battle's over. And I do Earthquake. Taking out the Ferrothorn, giving Metagross 5 kills in Magnetric 1. Uh, we did get the 6-0, so we are sitting pretty in the league right now. I think at a plus 13? Plus 15? Plus 17? I'm not sure where we're at. Uh, I'd have to look. But I don't, I don't have that in front of me. I just have it, the team, team uh, previews in front of me. Uh, so, but we are sitting at the top with 4-0, of course. Uh, Boston Breloom's and Scotland Scissors still have to battle. So if Breloom's win that one, uh, we will still be tied with 4-0. But I should have a better differential. I don't think he can reach my differential even with a 6-0 at this point. Uh, but next week we are battling the Boston Breloom's, so that will change short, right quick, um, and. Right now, Metagross is sitting at Mega Metagross is sitting at the top of the MVP boards with s plus seven differential. It's nine kills, two deaths, um, and right behind him is Darmanitan with six kills, zero deaths. So if Darmanitan gets one kill and doesn't die in the uh, Boston Breloom's battle, he will be tied. Or if he gets more, then he'll be ahead. So it's nice that we're sitting at the top right now, real pretty with the top MVP Pokemon and the top league score but of course next week that should that will uh it might change because we could lose next week uh but if you guys want to keep up with all of the standings from all of the teams be sure to click on the link in the description below for the for the hub uh the no i think it's labeled as no name league hug it, hub it might be spreadsheet but there's a spreadsheet in or a google doc in there where you can see all of the stats for all the pokemon all the teams it's really cool uh so check that out and be sure to hit that like button if you liked, and we'll see you next time. And check out Euphoric. Bye. Hello, everyone, and thanks for checking out the video. If you want to see more videos like this one, click on the videos on the screen right now. And if you haven't already, click that subscribe button to get notified when new videos go up. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time. Bye.